Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika Zen. I'm Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. You are now in the den. So guys, this is my review recap for Sisters, The Last Laugh, Season 6, Episode 20. The Last Laugh, y'all. I don't know if anybody was laughing, baby. I don't know if it was a damn thing that was funny. <sighs> Zach and Fatima finally get on over here. You know, Miss Neighbor Girl was waiting outside. She said, I don't know what's going on, but they up here. Go see now. So apparently we got... You know, baby mama up here getting her arm wrapped by EMT, okay? We don't need to go to the hospital. We saying that we got cut on a piece of glass, which obviously is a lie. We got some random dude standing in the corner smoking a cigarette. Nobody going to ask him any questions. And we don't see Michael, okay, even when the cops get there, okay? Because neighbor called the cops, all right? She said, yes, ma'am, I did. I'm going to call the cops every single time. And if you need me to kick her behind, I'll do that too, okay? I'll do it for a pack of cigarettes if you let me. Okay, they don't check on the well-being and check to see visibly if Michael is there and if he's okay either. All we hear is Heather saying over and over and over that he is fine. I said, what? Where they do that at? Okay, moving right along, child. Danny, 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 Danny. I can't say that I expect anything else, but I would have been happy if we would have got it. Because, baby, the way that you try to sit here and gaslight and trigger and, you know, flip it and reverse it, do reverse psychology and play victim and lie on Dan Preston all at the same time. Preston said everything that we've been thinking and we've been wanting to say for the longest time. He read your behind down. Granted, Preston got his mess with him too okay i never cared for how we brung the mandy story in and said that oh you know he was going to be engaged to her if you didn't want him and he was giving out these ultimatums and all of that but the fact is that you sat here and made it a commitment to him that you knew that you didn't want to okay you could have left him alone right when that mandy situation would have happened and nobody wouldn't have been mad at you but no instead you said i want to be with you i want us to do this i want to bring you on in here but you spending every damn night since you met tony by the way who was given nothing but damn stalker vibes and i was so happy that you finally brought up how damn creepy that freaking truck is okay that he been driving around in child because we all was thinking it and speaking of creeps listen brian okay brian I got my eyes on you, okay? It's giving very much creepy, sir. It's giving you doing way too much. Why are you being so damn nice? Why are you being so extra? I do not freaking trust it. You know, could we possibly have a Karen that is showing growth? I would love to see it. Could we have a change in Karen and Andy, Lord? Thank you. I would be so happy and I would be so much here for it. But then we still got damn Danny going freaking backwards. We got Sabrina playing damn naive and we got Gary conveniently all of a sudden able to find the damn P.I. that can find the info on Tamara and the fact that she knew uh, Fatima all of a sudden now after his stuff got blown up. So did you always have this Gary and was just waiting with it on the back burner because baby is just too, 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 too suspicious to me. Okay, Gary with your raggedy behind so now we gotta go back to that storyline like who the hell asked for this y'all but we gonna go ahead and take it from the top okay break it on down you know how we do so child we started out with this, you know Fatima and Zach they get there of course the neighbor had called them and they asking what's going on she like I don't know but they up here now when we get in the house like I said you know her arm is getting wrapped up and they asking for Michael asking how he doing of course Heather's like what are y'all doing here get the hell up out of my house you know y'all ain't gotta be here he's fine ain't nothing wrong with him or whatever the case may be and we seeing that it's looking like Heather could possibly be in some type of DV situation right we don't know that for sure she claiming that she done cut this hand on a piece of glass or whatever but obviously it had to be some kind of commotion for an ambulance and police to be called there okay neighbors had to hear something so 
you know, that remains to be seen. But obviously she don't want them in, there in her business. So she keeps saying, what are y'all doing here? Y'all ain't got to be coming up in here. Y'all ain't got to be checking on him every minute. You know, he's saying, no, I wanted to make sure my son was good. And she's telling them he's fine. So get the hell out. Now the cop, remember, you know, remembers that because it's the same cop that showed up at his house before. And he's like, you the father, right? And Zach is saying, yeah. And then he was like, I just wanted to make sure my son was good. And the cop tells him, you know, to go ahead and leave or whatever right and so when he gets downstairs well when him and Fatima get downstairs the neighbors asking is everything all right and they're saying yeah and she's like is the baby all right and they're pretty much like yeah but technically y'all didn't see the damn baby okay y'all didn't see the baby the cops didn't see the baby the EMT didn't see the baby all we see is freaking Heather so I'm like is he really fine child I don't put nothing past nothing these damn days but nonetheless you know neighbor said child one more thing happened, okay, and if she called me out my name again, I'm a bust her ass for you, so you won't have to worry about going to court and doing anything. Zach over here talking about, please do it, I'll pay you. I said, now, Zach, don't even sit out here, you know, saying that mess, okay? Next thing you know, you're behind to be in court where you, you know, was giving people bribes to, you know, be in fights. But nonetheless, she said she would do it for a pack of cigarettes, and, you know, Fatima was pretty much like, let's go, okay? Thank you very much, Miss Neighbor. We're going to see you. Thank you you for calling us and she get um you know zach up out of there so you know we have it the next morning is a new day or whatever you know we all got to get up and get ready for work and one of the first people we see is karen and she's getting a call from mr brian okay he talking about some you know hey how you doing i got some great news you know um, we definitely are ready to start work. And she said, okay, that is good news. And he said, you know, you think you could swing by here so we could discuss it? She says, yeah, he like terrific, you know, and by the way, when I was telling my wife that she was expecting, she loaded up the truck with a whole bunch of stuff. And I figured I could give you that too when you come by around this morning. So she's like, oh, thank you. That's so sweet of her. He was like, you know, if, I, if you don't want it, I understand. And she like, no, I trust, you know, trust me. I want it. Okay. That's cool. So they talking about how they looking forward to it. And he was like, you know, she going to enjoy this process so much. And she said she trying. And he said, well, make sure you do. It was just too much for me. I don't know, y'all. Something about it just rubbed my spirit the wrong way. But, you know, they say they going to go ahead and see each other. Right. So. The next thing we know, we actually have Fatima phone ring and Fatima's like, hello, you know, and she's hearing somebody saying hello and it's like, who's this? Oh, this is Karen. And it's like, OK. And it's like, oh, don't worry, I'm not going to hold you up long. You know, I just wanted to run it by you. I have this contractor that's basically saying he got a whole bunch of clothes, a whole bunch of toys, you know, because he got a lot of kids and they've outgrown everything. And he wanted to give a lot of it to me or whatever. But some stuff I know I'm not going to really need to use right now. So do you think? Zach with mine if I give him some things for Michael and she's like well you know sure okay yeah he might want that you know I'll ask him and she was like okay thank you so of course when she hang up the phone she like WTF okay because we ain't expecting no call from Karen but I love the fact that she did call for Tima and not Zach okay that was grown woman status as far as I'm concerned and if it's really genuine and she is trying to give him you know these extra things that he could use for Michael and start off on a good foot with them. Like I said already, I'm here for it. I would love to see us go in that direction and not have to keep with the back and forth and the arguing and brick, you know, bickering and all of that. You know, we shall see because we know we'll get to season seven soon and we know we got new writers on that. So it's very, you know, I'm curious to see the direction we're going to go in. Now, moving right along, we get over to Preston and Danny. And now, mind you, Danny had came in or whatever and she over here thinking she gonna creep in and Preston gonna be asleep. She like, oh, I wasn't still expecting for you to be up. And he was like, oh, did you think I was gonna be asleep or did you want me to be asleep? And she's like, no, I just figured you would be asleep because it's late. And he's been sitting here all day waiting to have this conversation with her. So he's like, yo, I literally waited all damn day, you know, to talk to you. And she's like, well, I'm so tired. I really don't want to talk right now. Like, if you don't mind, I'd rather hold this conversation to the morning. I'm going to go and take a shower and get ready for bed so that I could get up in the morning for work. 
And he's like, okay, so we gonna play it that way. You just gonna avoid me. And it's like, no, I'm not avoiding you. You know, it's just really been a long day. I was out with the girls. That's what we do. And he's like, well, that was fine that you, you know, go and hang out with your girls. But what's not fine is that I sat my behind all around all damn day because you told me that you was gonna talk to me when you got in from work. And now that you got in from work, you know, I'm getting damn excuses. Like you had me waiting. Did you even ever look at the freaking gift that I left you? So she over here talking about so oh my bad i'm sorry i forgot i had left it there at the job which basically just tells me that you don't give a damn about me okay so i felt where preston was coming from with that part and she's like no seriously preston my bad like you know you taking it another way i can see that you're very upset you're in your feelings you're coming out your face you're being rude i think you need to calm it down for a minute give yourself time to cool down before we talk i don't think that we should talk like this with you in the mood that you're in so Preston is basically like, oh, I'm the one that's hot and got attitude. It's me right now. I'm the problem, right? And she's telling him to take the hostility out of his voice. And she's like, I'm not hostile. She was like, yeah, let's just going down into this or whatever. Right? You see your face. So nonetheless, you know, she's telling him that, you know, she did forget the gift at work and that she was sorry and that, you know, we gonna go ahead and just do this tomorrow. I really can't do this tonight because it really was a lot. A lot of stuff went down, you know, with the girls while I was out with them that you don't know about. And he tells her, of course, you know, make it about you. Right. So at first he was basically like, yeah, OK, whatever, you know, do what you do. And then he's like that sarcasm. And she basically is like, you know, well, that wasn't good sarcasm or whatever. Right. But we going to talk about this in the morning. You go ahead and cool off. And he's like, OK. And she says, thank you. Right. So she go ahead to take her shower or whatever. Right. Preston wasn't here for it. So now when we get to this next morning, you know, he up bright and early. Apparently he been slamming the doors and making noise and making sure that she up and he stops at the bed and he's like, OK, time for you to get up. So she's looking at her damn, you know, clock on her phone and she like, yo, I still got a whole nother two hours. And he like, yeah, that's cool. But you can clearly see him putting on, on his clothes and stuff like he getting ready to leave. And so he's pretty much coming with that energy. Like if I wait for you to freaking get up i'll be waiting forever and if we don't talk now then we probably never gonna talk a whole nother damn day gonna go by because you're gonna be telling me that you want to talk to me after work again so i need you to get up and talk to me now so she's like i'm up you know i'm barely up i'm just waking up i'm opening my eyes or whatever he's like no sit up and she's like okay she sits up so he's like, you know, so what's good? What's going on with us? Oh, well, I don't know. Since you're the one that started this conversation and want to have this conversation, then you should probably be the one to lead it because I'm still half sleep. So he like, OK, you want me to ask the question? She like, yeah, you know, you the one that's starting all of this. You the one that want the conversation. So, yeah, why don't you go ahead? Go for it. So first question he's asking is, yo, the guy at work, are you sleeping with him? You know, no. Contrary to what you think, Danny says, I'm not sleeping with him. And he's like, oh, it's not about what I think. I'm asking you a question. And it's like, no, if you're asking me that, then obviously you probably think that I am. You know, I don't even know him. Well, that wasn't a good thing to say. You no know, pun intended. But Preston comes back like, well, you've slept with plenty of people that you don't know. So that ain't really saying much. And I mean, he ain't lying. Right. And then she turns and says, including you, you was a stranger too. That's a fact as well. OK, so we basically, you know, have him saying like, OK, but do you want to sleep with him or are you planning to sleep with him? Do you have interest in him? That's the bottom line, because obviously he ain't a fool. He heard part of their conversation. He see what's going down. He see that dude wants her. He ain't damn blind. So he already put in two and two together. Plus you hanging out like the last two, three nights, whatever the hell it's been after work. And you have been with damn Tony. So he ain't that far off. Right. So. It's basically like if you know that you're interested in him, then why would you even bother starting anything with me and bringing me back here and all of that stuff, right? And she keeps going, you know, I don't know what well, you tell me. And if that's what you think and that's what you feel and that's what you're going to say anyway. And pretty much being dismissive of everything that he brings up or whatever the case may be and not answering anything directly. Every time he's like, oh, is that what you're going to keep saying? OK. And she's like, yeah, that's all I pretty much have to say. I don't know what else I'm supposed to say to that because you're over here acting like if you know all the answers already, even though I'm telling you contrary to what you may think. 
I have not done anything with this guy, whatever the case may be. And that was nowhere near on my mind. And so, you know, basically, you know, she's like, oh, well, I don't know what else you want me to say. Like, I don't have much to say or whatever. Right. Pre pretty much just kept going on with that. Right. And so he was like, you know, I'm really starting to feel like the only reason why you bring me back, like the way that I see it or whatever, is that when that whole situation went down with the guy that attacked you, you felt like me being back here, you know, can make you safe or whatever, or would be convenient for you, something that you was used to only because you felt like that went bad, right? But had it not went bad and he didn't do what he did, which nobody wishes that on you. Um, then you probably would have been with him and I still wouldn't have been here. And she's like, okay, if that's what you want to think, if that's what you want to feel, like pretty much everything he's saying is a okay. You know, he tells her, I don't think you was ever ready to commit. I don't think you ever really wanted to be with me. And it's more so of a convenience or whatever the case may be, right? And that you was just led back into being with me after the whole situation went down. And so at first she was shaking her head no. And he's like, you know, I'm telling you the damn truth right now, Danny, right? But she's basically not agreeing with him. And I guess in her head, she feels like if she says something else or whatever, then, you know, he pretty much feels the way he feels. So we get that shut down, Danny, where it's like, okay, 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 to every single thing that he says. And then she's looking at him like he crazy, like he got three heads when he's like, you know, you always try to make me out to be like I'm the asshole or whatever. And like, I haven't been trying and different things of that nature. And he's like, at the end of the day, how is that supposed to make me feel that, you don't know or that you're always saying okay and then she keeps telling him not to take that tone with her he's like out of everything that i'm saying my tone is the problem like that's the worst thing that let me not use that tone right let me not use you know no tone at all because obviously that's the only problem that you're seeing here when in all actuality the problem is that i've probably been too damn nice to you all of this time right and again okay preston if you say that you know you say so and he's like again that's all that i'm gonna get you know oh i don't have anything else to say and so it's like okay well where's this conversation supposed to go if you don't have anything to say and it's just me talking about how I'm feeling and you don't care about my feelings you know and so he tells her go ahead be with the guy from the airport or whoever you want to be with or whatever I'm done he's like hopefully he could protect you he said you know I'm always gonna love you I'm gonna love you no matter what but the problem is that you know that I love you right I loved you even the last time we, we broke up but you are never gonna love me in the same way I'm never going to get back from you what I want and I'm you know I'm just, just not going to be a mutual thing or whatever right and so Danny is saying that she not saying nothing because she basically is making it where you know it's hard to argue with yourself and he's telling her that she's been insulting him and she's like I've been insulting so basically when he's saying he gonna leave she's like that's what you always do you know you're always looking for an excuse you run out the door anyway you've done it every single time you go running and he's like no I don't go running I would be here to the end of time if I could be but at the end of the day if I feel like you don't want me or you're pushing me away or whatever the case may be yeah I'm gonna go ahead and leave you know like I've tried it's not like I haven't tried or whatever right and so he's like yeah I'm done I ain't gonna do this with you and he goes to walk away and she's basically like yeah sure fine do that like that's always what I see is the back of you as a matter of fact even before that when they was talking back and forth and he was telling her that he loved her and all of that she just was going oh is that so really okay if you say so or whatever so at one point he was like f you and she gonna say that he told her that she was a whore and he's like that's not what i said i have never said that and i will never say that right so it's like then you was trying to put words in his mouth she basically was like with one breath you tell me you love me with the other breath you tell me i'm a whore i said girl danny bye now we get on over to Andy house. We get one call, which I was assuming was Andy, where they asking for permission to send her up. And we get another call that is actually from um, Jordan, where, you know, he's calling to apologize about what happened that night before, which is not his fault. He had no control over that. He's checking on her. And he also lets her know, like, you know, 
well, he's a, you know, damn a-hole or whatever. We didn't know nothing about this. We was getting to know him and we thought he was cool at first or whatever the case may be. And he's basically like, you know, the sister wanted to talk to her because he fig she figured she has a lot of questions that Andy probably could give her some insight. And he like, maybe you could even get some stuff answered for yourself. And she was like, to be honest, I don't really want nothing else answered. Like, I'm good on that. And he's like, you know, I could definitely understand where you coming from. So she had told him, I don't know yet. And he was like, I understand that. She was like, can I get back to you on that? And he was like, of course, no problem, right? And he was asking her like, oh, well, I guess you knew him a little bit better than we did. And she was like, that remains to be seen because obviously I'm starting to think I didn't know him either, right? And so in the midst of this, you know, she had told him she didn't need any more information or whatever. And he was like, well, you said you work downtown, right? And because she had told him, well, I got to get ready to get off this phone. I got to go to work. And he was like, oh, my bad. I should have, you know, asked you if you was busy or whatever, right? So he's like, you work downtown. She like, yeah. He was like, well, I actually have some business downtown. So I went in my, you know, meeting up with you. And she was like, yeah, I don't know about all of that. Like, maybe we could have lunch together. And he was like, I get that, especially after the last time. So she was like, but, you know, can I get back to you in a couple hours and let you know the answer to that for sure so he was like yeah no problem that's fine so as Cameron is finally getting off this elevator or whatever, we like, okay, I'll speak to you in a little bit or whatever, right? And we hang up with him. And I was surprised because I wasn't honestly expecting her to hear from him no more. That's so freaking awkward. Like, this is my sister who's pregnant by this guy that she thought she about to marry and have this new baby with, who I'm over here thinking I'm cool and good with being with my sister. And then the new love interest that I have just so happens to be the ex that he hurt that now is coming and telling my sister everything that went down between them like it can't get no more awkward than that so I didn't know if he still would want to talk to her and I don't know in what capacity that they can talk now because every time his sister would see Andy it would be that reminder of what Gary did but I appreciated again another moment of just people being grown and mature and not acting like damn kids and not trying to blame each other you know for the situation at hand or whatever. I did appreciate that, but I don't know exactly where that could possibly go now, to be honest. Now, Karen gets upstairs or whatever, and she's checking on Andy. And Andy is, of course, saying she's still hurt. She's still mad. You know, he looked me straight in my face. And she's like, how could I have not seen this? How did I have not no damn clue? Okay, am I really that blind? And, you know, Karen tells her the devil was good at hiding. And she basically was like, you know that I know better than anybody because you know she told her well you was in love and can't I mean Andy was kind of like was and she said girl you still love him she said well you can't turn love off and on like that you of all people should know and she like you right you right girl I damn sure can't talk when it comes to that part okay so she was like you definitely right about that but trust me you're gonna be okay we're gonna be okay we've been okay times before in the past and I appreciated them having that little con convo and I appreciate them saying you gonna be all right like this too shall pass because sometimes when you in that moment you don't feel like it is but it definitely is you will be okay all right and so here she goes talking about how she want to run him over with the car and she was like the car that he bought you and she was like especially that car but I said Andy in all actuality honey you need to sell the car sell that damn penthouse use the money to get your own damn penthouse or whatever sell all the clothes sell anything that and everything that had anything to do with him girl just free yourself okay that is my advice for you but nonetheless you know she basically was like so you know you, we gonna be able to push through this or whatever right and she's like have you heard anything from him and she was like no but I wouldn't really know because I blocked him and she like good for you okay that's the start so she asked her what she you know had even came by for and she was like well one to check on you and two you know I'm on my way to meet up with the contractor because she was saying she have to get ready to go to work and she's like yeah I'm actually going by the shop so when she said she was going by the contractor, Andy was like, oh, shoot, yeah, I forgot. I'm so sorry. She takes out the check and writes a check for her. Now, we never know what the daggone amount was, but she says she have all the estimates down from the email or whatever. And Karen was like, wow, you just whip out this check and write this to me just like that. And she's like, yeah, of course. You know, anytime I got you, I told you I was going to have you. So Karen keeps saying thank you. And she's like, you don't have to say thank you. And Karen is telling her she's going to get it back to her. And she's like, damn, I'll just had paid back the initial debt that I had to you and now here I go 
getting something else from you or whatever right and she says i know you're gonna pay me back and you don't have to rush don't worry about it you take my you know your time when you get it to me you get it to me so i'm wondering because remember I know she ripped up the second check from Zach, but there was a first check that he had gave her a 77,000, I think it was when he first got the money. And I'm wondering if that's the money that she paid back Andy from when she initially helped her, like she gave her the whole, you know, first check from Zach or whatever, because that's the only thing that would make sense to me as to how that money went so fast. But anyway, just a thought. So they go ahead and they head out to leave or whatever to start their days. And she was basically saying how she can, you know, use a distraction. So now we get over to Danny house and she hearing some knocking at the door and she like, oh, is that you? Did you come back? Are you acting right now? And it's actually Sabrina talking about is me. And now we're going to sit down and we're going to have the blues and we're going to act like we on the damn version tears. And Sabrina saying it didn't go well. What happened? And she talking about, oh, he just left, girl, you know, and he said it was over per usual. You know, what else is new? It's fine. And you know what? He had the nerve and the audacity to call me a whore. And Sabrina talking about, no, he didn't. Oh, I can't believe this. Shame on him. How could he say something like that? You know, Danny, yeah, it doesn't make no sense at all. It's just all so confusing. And Sabrina, oh my God, girl, why would Preston do that? And I'm saying, you know, that is not Preston, Sabrina, and you should know your friend better than that. And you should call her out on it and be real. I get tired of the fake and the phoniness of it all when we all supposed to be friends, child. A friend for me means I tell you the truth. You tell me the truth, even if we don't agree with it and we get mad at it sometimes or whatever. You know, Sabrina over here talking about that's projecting. He trying to put stuff off on you. And Danny talking about some I'm good. So Sabrina tells her anyway that she on her way to see her boss. And she like, what? You know, could you possibly be getting your job back? And she's like, I don't know, but I hope so. And Danny's basically like, well, I hope so too, because I could use some good news, something to celebrate around this time. And, you know, I ain't got a damn dime to give you. So they go ahead to leave and she getting her jacket and this and that for her. And Danny's still acting like she having a hard damn time leaning against the door as they freaking walk out. I said, girl, bye. What? Whatever. Like, why are you sitting there lying, Danny, saying that this man called you a whore when he didn't? Then we get to freaking, um... Zach and Fatima, you know, he still don't want to eat. It was pretty much the conversations that we always get from Zatima. Okay, nothing really new. Um, he didn't want to eat. He was worried about Michael. And she was like, come on, you got to eat. You got to drink something. You got to keep your strength. I don't want you losing weight. I don't want you skinny. I want you to stay the weight that you are. You know, he told her, you don't got to worry about that. I'm definitely am going to do that. And he like, maybe in a little bit, but with me having that on my mind, I just can't think about eating no food right now, but I went ahead and cooked. So you go ahead and dig in. So, you know, he brings up like, how do you deal with me again? You know, per usual Zach, what he always brings up, you know, with the Karen and all this different stuff. And she was like, Zach, speaking of Karen, funny thing, she actually just called me a little bit ago. And he like, what? She called you. What are you talking about? Like, for what? What did she say? So she was like, she actually told me she got this contract that could possibly have some clothes. You know, if you wanted some of the clothes and toys from Michael that she would give it, she wanted me to run it by you. And he was like, wait a minute, Karen. He was like, how does she sound? She was like, she actually sounded really nice and really calm. So he was like, is she crazy? What the hell is going on? She was like, child, don't ask me that. OK, you be trying to ask everybody that like that's your baby mama. OK, I don't know. But he was like, could she possibly be turning a new leaf? Like, is things changing here? And she was like, now, don't get too carried away, okay? Let's take this one day at a time. And they base, both basically agree on that, and they go ahead and start digging into the food. It seemed like after that happened, his behind calmed down a little bit and got a little bit of an appetite. So then we get to Danny standing by her car. Now, first, I don't know if she was locking it up to go in or if she was trying to get in it for something. But, of course, you know, per usual, Stalker Tony is standing right behind her. You know, let's get ready to go in to work. Are we ready for our work day? And how are you doing? And I said, listen, Tony, you got one more time to call Preston Yosemite Sam and I'm going to be on you, brother. OK, I'm going to be right on your damn neck. Keep freaking press the name out your damn mouth okay and she talking about some oh no you ain't got to worry about him coming by whatever so she asking him what exactly his position is you know at the job matter of fact before that 
he started saying how Jordan and his sister's good. You know, they are very close. And Danny was like, oh, that's good. You know, um, that she have him and stuff like that. And, you know, basically that she was the only child because he was asking, do she have any brothers and sisters? And he was like, that explains a lot. Basically, he's the only child, too. And he felt like they had the same vibe. They also agreed that both of them was ready to whip on, you know, Gary Raggedy behind or whatever and nobody wouldn't have been able to stop them and whoever they go after you know usually deserves it and Danny's agreeing with him like yeah that's what I'll be saying so you know after them saying that she was asking him what exactly does he do at the airport that she never really knew and he was saying that he was basically a director but sometimes he come on down okay and want to see what the little people was doing and check in and be on the front lines and work and be able to go back and tell them different different little things that you know they need to fix or need to make better and different things of that nature so she was like oh okay that makes sense and she's talking about so you make you a little, little nice little change or whatever right and then even when he was saying we both need to go into work because we won't have no daggone checks he's like unless you have another way and you got money and you about to split it with me Danny was like first of all I don't but even if I did have money I sure as hell wouldn't be splitting it with you I said well this the first time Danny that you have told the truth so far this freaking morning and it's funny you got all this conversation for Mr. Tony but you ain't have none for Preston girl but you know nonetheless I direct you know digress moving right along child so they say they gonna get on in here to work, okay? And it's basically giving me, you know, the whiz, ease on, ease on down the road. Mind you, she was basically like, well, you know, it also threw me off because you be driving that creepy ass van that look like it's a people, you know, kidnap a damn van or whatever, right? And then he talking about some, you know, oh, well, yeah, I could have had other vans and, you know, I could always get other cars and things of that nature, but it's kind of sentimental to me because it was my dad's. But, you know, actually, he was in prison and he was a creeper and then it's like oh no just joking I'm like a bad joke honey nobody found it funny okay anyway child they say that they gonna go ahead and get in right so they go ahead about they damn day I said Danny girl whatever okay I hope you get what you looking for nonetheless moving on from there we basically um you know had um Karen finally show up to meet up with Mr. Brown, right? And he starts, you know, he give her the bag of clothes. She looking at it. She like, oh, this is so cute. You know, he asking him about she don't want more kids. She like, I'm just trying to concentrate and focus on getting through this one right here. You know, oh, you should consider it. Uh, sir. And he was like, yeah, I'm doing too much. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. And she was like, yeah, you should slow down just a little bit. So now this is what he wants her to look at. He's telling her that he could do this whole new job is a whole different price or whatever. Mind you, she got the check in her pocket that came from Andy. So it's like, no, sir, I got this money for what you said. Okay, I ain't got time to be paying no other extra stuff. I ain't got the money for it. But he's telling her she would get all of this for the same price. And he's like, you lease, right? He's telling her how he know her landlord and the landlord is an asshole. And this is apparently a whole new site that's a building that's up for damn sale where she wouldn't have to deal with some of the things that she be dealing with here. She could actually like least to buy that damn building and be paying the exact same amount but get all this stuff that he got on this damn you know paper whatever the case may be you know same price for less trouble supposedly wink 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 and he over here like you know let come on and get in the van and let me ride you ride you ride you over there right we ain't gonna drive in separate cars like what you think i'm gonna do something to you i say yes mr brian i do i don't trust you as far as i see you and karen i need you to act like you got more damn sense he told you know she said well i don't think it would be appropriate for me to get in the car with you and you and marry me oh my wife don't worry about stuff like that you know she ain't worried about nothing like that because she know that i would never cheat and then karen like oh, okay she gonna go ahead and over, you know, look on over here anyway, child. I said, girl, be careful, Karen. Be careful, girl. Because something about this is just being too extra for me. Now, Gary bring his raggedy behind over here to Hayden House or whatever. And him and Tamara was outside kissing. He actually was just about to leave from work. And he's like, yo, this ain't nothing but a damn, you know, sourpuss ass hater. That's why he always being grumpy, baby. Don't pay him no mind. Because Gary was sucking his teeth like, oh boy, when they get and kissy 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 poo and when he said hi to, when she said hi to him he gave her back a dry hi so 
he's like, you know, what is it? You know, and don't be popping up at my house or whatever. Anytime you feel like it, like I know we cool and everything. This is what Hayden say to Gary once she go back in the house. He talking about here, take a look at this. You really going to see this. You know, what is it? All of a sudden, this is what my P PI found. So you're telling me your PI are high and low. You had all these special resources and every which way that you could look and not a damn thing was coming up for tomorrow the whole time. Plus Hayden had looked up to, into her. But you what? Ran back to the PI again and was like, look again. Uh, search in some other places and find this info that Fatima knows her through her cousin. She worked with Fatima's cousin before. Like all of a sudden that info came up from where? How come you couldn't never find it before? That makes me feel like Gary was sitting on this information. So he felt like he needed it. He pissed off and sour. Just like Aiden Dam said. And because he's in a bad situation and his shit got blown up. He wanted to blow up Hayden's world too. Because make it make sense. Why would it all of a sudden come out now? And it ain't come out in the thorough check before. Oh no, she her record was clean as a whistle. Child, whatever. So of course now we gonna have him confronting Fatima next week. But that was the episode, y'all. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, all that good stuff. Put it in the comments, you know. Um, anything that I left out, let's discuss it down there. Okay, give me a wave. Let me know you came by. Put some flames up in the sky. Like, comment, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe if you were so inclined. Ooh, child. Okay, so next time, y'all, y'all know that I'm doing the subscribe-a-thon. It's going down. I've been giving y'all content every day. Tomorrow night is movie night with the ladies. We will be doing part two of the Jacksons come through. We will also be doing Raising Canaan predictions. And then Friday will be my Raising Canaan review. You know, Love After Locker review rap ish on sunday you know and we just keep it going and going and going y'all okay see you then